the door opens and I hear police police I'm in my pajamas and I'm like something terrible is wrong or like one of us is wanted for murder <laughs> like my microphone <clears throat> i don't know why i'm whispering but always wanted to have one of these little microphones and now i do and i love it anyways we are doing a story time today i've been compiling the craziest stories that have happened to me in new york these are reasons you either maybe should or shouldn't move here or at least be prepared to experience but at the same time i think i have an unnaturally unlucky pull for like crazy events i've seen a lot of people on the internet responding to videos of crazy things that people record in new york and they're like i've lived in new york for all my life and i've never seen something like this this changes people's perception of new york well i have about 12 of those type of stories that i've experienced just from the past four years so that leads me to believe something is a little bit off with my luck nonetheless i now have these funny stories so i I kind of gave them short titles just to jog my memory when I was going to talk about them. I'm trying to decide where we should start. I think we should start with the story, Poop Train Woman. I actually told my friend this earlier today, so it's fresh on my mind. So the story begins. I'm 18 years old, freshly moved to New York. I've only been maybe three times my whole life. It was my first semester in college. I don't even think I'd live there for a month. We're in the subway. We're waiting on the platform for the train to come. Probably a good 100 feet away, a woman starts screaming, which is not really uncommon. But then I look over. She has her pants off. All the way down butt out facing the track she's like squatting down with her butt facing towards the train track screaming after a few seconds of that a liquid that is not yellow starts projectile exiting from her rear end all over the floor a few seconds later a giant wafting cloud of a certain scent makes its way down to the platform everyone is turning around and walking the other way because it's nauseating i i've never smelled something quite like that in my life <laughs> So everyone's turning around and leaving. So that makes her very angry. Once she finishes her situation, she then turns around, picks up her things off the floor, which is a like an umbrella stick, and begins chasing after people, screaming and yelling at them, beating them with the stick. At this point, the train comes. Me and all the people I'm with, we just get on the train thinking we'll be safe. No. She comes into our train car and is hitting everyone with the stick. She's coming closer and closer and closer. I am like a deer in headlights. Like, what can you even do? What can you even do? I have nothing on me. I'm just gonna get hit with the umbrella stick. I'm like prepared. I'm like, okay, she's gonna hit me. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> Some random lady with this giant shopping bag shoots her arm out, hits the woman with the shopping bag, and the woman gets angry, runs off the train, doors close, and we continue on our journey. Like I said, that was probably within my first month of living in New York. Very quickly, I became desensitized to a lot. <laughs> Yeah, I'll never forget that one though. So that was Poop Train Woman. Believe it or not, I also have a Poop Train Man story. So how did this one go? Me and my friend were coming from Grand Central. We had just been out of New York for the weekend, just got back. We're on the train riding back to our dorm. A man comes and there is a very suspicious stain right in the center of the back of his pants that is also not yellow. He's coming down the subway car. Following is again another glorious waft of a very unpleasant smell. I knew immediately that this was now happening again because of my experience with Poop Train Woman. And he's yelling at people. He's like standing in front of people and yelling at them comes in front of me yelling screaming i'm just like oh uh, and there is a very suspicious substance on his hands so i'm just sitting there i can't believe this is um this story time is starting out this way i'm really sorry maybe i should have not put the most disgusting ones at the front but it was the freshest on my mind no pun intended in those moments like i don't know you just kind of black out pray to god hope it passes without you getting touched he didn't touch me I survived and that was Poop Train Man. What next? Oh, this is a good one. Okay, so my first ever New York apartment. I was 19 this time. We lived on the very top floor. I was sleeping all night long. I woke up at like seven in the morning to pounding on my front door, but I was in my room, in my bedroom with the door shut and people were banging on the door and I hear, open up, open up. And I'm like, what? Like, I can't even like formulate. I just I'm in shock. I'm like, what is going on? I start to get out of bed and try to figure if I should walk outside or not. Also, I think my roommates are home. I'm not really sure. I know at least one of them is. And I'm like, is she hearing this? Like, what's Like, there's no way you couldn't be hearing. They're screaming and pounding on the door. The door opens and I hear police, police. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what the hell? What the hell? 
like i said i just woke up i wasn't really all there yet i'm in my pajamas i open the door and there's two police officers standing in the middle of our kitchen and i'm like oh my god like something terrible is wrong or like one of us is wanted for murder you would have thought they had been sent there with the warrant for our arrest also my other roommate is not coming out of the door it's just me in my pajamas facing these officers they start asking if we have a roommate what's her name and i'm like oh my god something is horribly horribly wrong they're like yeah so we got a report last night that a package was stolen and it was your roommate's package oh Hey. It was your roommate's package. We caught the guy in your building and he had a knife. To this day, every time I tell the story, it gets a little bit weirder because there's just no scenario where they should have entered the apartment. It was seven in the morning and there was nothing wrong. They had found our friend's package. That's a phone call. That is not a screaming banging on the door. And yes, the door was unlocked. Yes, that was our fault. Like I said, we were freshly 19, young and dumb, but we also kept our door locked all the time. It was just a very chance happening. But still in any situation, what made them take their hand, try the door, and then when it was unlocked open the door enter the apartment yelling at seven in the morning for a stolen package that they had found and a thief that had been caught to this day i still don't get that you would have thought that we were somehow involved in this package stealing ring as if my roommate like wasn't the victim of <laughs> whatever happened and i couldn't get them to leave like once they had explained why they were here and everyone's looking around a little confused okay like so why exactly are you here though and then the guy wants to like look around the apartment he goes up to the roof on our stairs i'm like what in the world like what is going on so they left i guess they i don't even remember it was traumatic and it took me two weeks really i think to process it and even tell my mom like what had happened because i was so confused and i was like have i done something wrong years later the only fault of mine was having my door open other than that i was just shocked that was my story called police bursting into my apartment at 7 a.m when roommate lost package okay we'll tell a funny one one that's not as traumatic but traumatic in its own right this one is called chris rock bakery so how old was i i think 19 again here this is when i was living in that same apartment i was working at a bakery it was in an area it wasn't uncommon for a celebrity to walk in but a celebrity never had it was a purple lilac bakery they sold like 20 dollar cookies it was like the very end of my shift like we probably had an hour left so the way it worked we had like two girls who worked the counter you sell the cookies check people out then we have bakers in the back like i said it was late at night so it was only three of us there it was a small establishment like the back was only separated by a thin curtain that we just kind of moved out of the way and we needed to go back there people were always asking the exact same question which was how do you get the custom cookies because they would print people's faces on cookies but we couldn't do it in the store you'd order it online so all day you answer questions about people asking about the process so this guy comes in he's asking me 50 million questions about the process i'm explaining it all another guy walks in the store i notice him but not too much he's just wearing like a long coat glasses you can't really see his face all of a sudden and he opens his mouth and starts speaking and it's chris rock i i don't know what happened i'm not even like a huge fan of chris rock i mean maybe i'm a bigger fan than i thought i just hear his voice and i'm like is that chris rock like he just has an unforgettable voice you would recognize chris rock's voice anywhere and if you think that you wouldn't you would even if you're not a chris rock fan you would put your head up i never understood the feeling of being starstruck until this very moment i don't know what happened to me it was like my entire soul and personality left my body and i was an empty shell of a person and i couldn't even remember my name what direction was what what day what year who was the president nothing i'm just like staring at him and this guy is still asking me questions and i'm looking at him like do you not hear chris rock is still standing next to you and i'm looking at chris rock he's talking and i'm like does he know he's chris rock because everyone's acting super normal about this as if chris rock is not just standing in this purple lilac princess style custom 20 dollar cookie bakery and he's like trying to order for my friend and he wants six chocolate chip cookies so my friend goes to the back to check because like i said it's the end of the day and we run out of cookies by the end of the day especially chocolate chip because they were so popular like i said the back is only separated by a curtain okay she runs behind the curtain which is open like you can hear everything she goes guys guys chris rock chris rock is here Chris fucking rock just walked in and so I'm like standing there staring at him like hi couldn't think of a word to say because he also wasn't giving off the vibe that he wanted to talk or be recognized he probably just wanted to be a person and I felt so bad for what was going on but I had no control over my body and I was just like ha huh. How are you? So weird. The baker who was in the bathroom <laughs> comes out of the bathroom, comes out of the curtain. Same thing. Lifeless, soulless, personality leaves his body. We don't have the cookies either. We're out of the cookies. So now we're all standing there looking at him with our mouths on the floor, acting like it's the first day all three of us have ever been on earth. And he looks at us. And he's like, you know what? Just forget it. Turns around, leaves. We're all standing there like, I was more shocked at the way that I reacted than I was shocked about it being Chris Rock. That was one of the most embarrassing, humbling experiences I've ever had. Like, mm.
I'm sorry, Chris Rock. If you see this, you should go back to the bakery because chocolate chip cookies were really good. And I'm sorry that we let you down. And I'm sorry. I'm just sorry. Next story is called Mold in our vents and super getting mad that I had his personal number. This, wow, all of these stories are occurring in the same time frame too. This was a crazy year for me. Again, I was 19. First New York apartment. We all had a separate AC unit. It was one of those ceiling units. They were all above our beds in each of the bedrooms. My unit and my roommate's unit looked like something was off. The entire vent on the front was black. All all up inside the AC black. It was completely molded. I noticed when I moved in, but I was like, is that a problem? I'm not really sure. I mean, is it mold? I don't know. It could just be very dirty. Who knows? And I'm like, why would they let us have it if it had mold in it? Again, very naive to the New York experience. It's just that your super and your landlord, unless you're lucky, don't give a fuck about you. You could have a hole in your floor and they'd be like, mm, but is it that serious though? So I was like, surely they wouldn't give us AC units if they were covered in mold, right? A few months go by of living there. My roommate gets insanely sick. The worst cough ever. Every two weeks, she has a new respiratory thing. We basically figured, well, it's the mold. And she's also having like a very serious allergic reaction to the mold. Got to the point where she was doing everything possible to not be there because of how sick it was making her. And so we're going back and forth with the super for weeks on end, begging him to come check the AC units and to fix them. He'd be like, okay, we're gonna send the technician out. Technicians would come, these two guys. They would walk around and they'd be like, yeah, AC not work. And I'm like, I, kn I know that. I know that it doesn't work. We need them to be cleaned at this point. I was just asking for them to be cleaned. And they were like, no. And they left. Just left. They looked at me and they said, no. And left. And I was like, okay. We called the super back again. We said, they didn't fix anything. They left. He's like, okay, we'll send them back out. They come back. They show up this time with a bottle of Windex to clean the mold. I don't even think they used the Windex, but this time they took trash bags and they just taped them over the AC unit and said, okay, fixed. Left. Again. It was not fixed. There was just a bag over it. I was like, this can't be happening. Like this actually can't be real. I sent a very angry text to the super and he's like, okay, you need to email this guy. I'm going to send you his contact. And I was like, okay, send me the contact. And he sends me the full contact of the landlord. I think like the guy who was managing the super, I see his personal phone number and I'm like, fuck the email. I'm going to call this guy because my roommate is probably going to die tomorrow and the technicians are not helping us. I think I called him. I tell him the whole story. I'm like basically on the verge of tears and I'm like begging him to just please replace these units because we can't breathe. He's like, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. How'd you get this number? I'm like, um, the super gave it to me. He's like, that can't be true. That can't be true. How'd you get this number? And I'm like, the super sent it to me. Please fix the AC. And he's like, no, you, he didn't give you this number. How, he, he wouldn't give you, this. how did you get this number? How'd you get this number? Fighting with me back and forth for 20 minutes about how I got his phone number, not giving a fuck in the world about the AC. I am not the most combative person. So my roommate grabs the phone from me and she starts yelling at this man as she should have, because like I said, we were sick. She was very sick, screaming at him, telling him how we're not gonna pay rent. She did what she needed to do. He very angrily said that he would help us and that they would be coming out on a certain day to replace the units. He didn't give us an exact time frame though. I had to text him again and again, and they finally came and they replaced our AC units. But then these units had a draining issue and they would drip constantly. So I had to end up putting a cup underneath the unit, which would fill up every 24 hours and I would have to go dump it out, put it back on the shelf. And all night I would hear a from the water dripping into the cup. I'm realizing that it's getting progressively darker as I'm recording because the sun has set. So I probably should have recorded this earlier, but it's okay. Let me check off the ones that I've already told so I can keep track of where I'm at. Okay. What's next? Oh, this is a good one. This one is called Girl in Wash taking the 20 out of my friend's wallet saying God led her to. This was, again, one of my first couple months in New York. I was 18 and it was during COVID. And so there was no social events, but everyone would gather at Washington Square Park. A bunch of college students and also just random young people would gather in this park. And that was our social time because there was nothing open and we could only gather outside. And technically we weren't even really supposed to be gathering outside. I know, I'm sorry, but I was a freshman in college. <laughs> <clears throat> there was a whole mix of people in this park. If you've ever been to Washington Square Park, it is quite the hodgepodge of people. Really a lot can go on because there's such a mix of people. So it was the end of the night and this woman came up to my friend and asked her for money. And so my friend gets out her wallet, is gonna give her some money and she has all of her cash in one place. She has a $20 bill. I think she either pulled out a five or a 10 to give to the woman and the woman sees the 20. And the woman's like, uh, oh, how about that 20? Give me that 20. <laughs> My friend's like, uh, uh, no. Mind you, this was like the rest of the money that she had for the rest of the month because we were in college and we were 18. And the woman goes, okay, fine. 
and leaves. The woman is going to other people around us. All of a sudden, she circles back. She comes back to my friend and she's like, you know what? I just, I really feel the need to tell you this. I'm feeling led to tell you this. God has led me back to you. God led me to you in the first place. God has led me back. I feel called to get this 20 from you. He has chosen you to give me this money. I feel called. God is telling me. God is telling me that is my 20. And we're like, what? I don't remember what my friend ended up saying. I think she cussed at my friend and then left. So shout out to her and I hope that God led her to receive the 20 that she deserved. Um, this one is called guy dying in the doorway, paramedics show up and hit the person on the bike. This was sometime I think in June of 2022. I remember that day because it was when Roe v. Wade got repealed. I had to work that day and it almost felt like I should take off work because it was just such a, I don't know, I just couldn't comprehend what was happening. And people were organizing protests later in Washington Square Park. So I got off work and the protest was starting. So I was kind of rushing home because I wanted to get there. I was meeting my friends. We were going to go protest. I'm running home to my apartment as I get closer, I can see my doorway from the top of the street and I see a pair of legs just jutted out from the doorway. So I'm getting closer, I'm closer and I see that this man, this socks on and his shoes are like off they're just next to him like he laid down for a nap took his shoes off laid down right in the doorway right in my door in my doorway <laughs> he was passing out i don't know what he had done or what had gotten him to this point i was assuming he was probably not in a very healthy state so i call 911 and i'm like hi um i'm trying to get in my apartment this man is unconscious in the doorway i think he needs help and they're like okay we'll send an ambulance the paramedics finally show up and they're taking for ever to get out of the car. As soon as they do, the guy opens his door. A biker is coming down the street. The biker smacks into the door of the ambulance, hits the floor, falls off his bike, and he's like, oh, oh, oh. And what are the odds that the car that you smack into is an ambulance? Then they start looking at this guy and they're trying to figure out this situation because he is hurt and fell off his bike and crashed. And I'm like, hello, the man over here in the door is also dying. And they're like, oh, they come over and they're staring at him. An older lady at this time is passing by. She sees the situation that's going on. She can very clearly assess the state that this man is in and the help that he needs. And she's like, I'm a nurse. He needs Narcan. The paramedics are like, uh, we don't have Narcan. And so then she proceeds to start cussing them out, being like, how are you a paramedic in New York City and you don't have Narcan? I too was very shocked by this. The guy on the bike is rolling around the ground, moaning and grunting still. The lady is cussing out the paramedics for not having Narcan. The guy is still dying in the doorway still not awake she goes over she starts yelling and snapping in his face he almost starts coming to but not really at this time a fire truck pulls up a bunch of firemen hop out they have these gigantic tools who's stuck in the doorway who's stuck in the doorway and i'm like no one's stuck in the doorway he's just in the doorway and they're like what they said we needed a fourth century and i'm like no i never said that and they are angry they are so mad they're like are you fucking serious oh my god they have like all these tools and i get it they came for no reason they look at the man in the doorway who still needs help they don't care at all they're just mad that they're even there so they turn around and they leave the paramedics start helping the guy he kind of starts waking up a little bit they try to lift him up they try to help him he starts violently screaming saying get off him he doesn't want help he doesn't want to go and they're like okay there's nothing we can do he doesn't want help so they start packing up and they start leaving but i can't get into my apartment still regard like if you're not going to help him okay I, I tried my best i still need to go home thankfully someone who lived in the building next door to me came home and went through their front door and we had a backyard that connected so i just i had to go inside and that was that story. So yeah, I'm gonna be mad if I think of more stories later, but I've been scheming for a couple weeks trying to remember some of the most craziest ones. Maybe I'll do a part two later if I think of more, but yeah, it's been quite a time. I will miss the chaos, you know? These are things that you just can't get anywhere else. Thank you for coming. I hope that you like my microphone and maybe I'll do more of these. Okay, bye.